How are we going everybody? Well now today I did a bit of a road trip, I ended up in Jung, uh, that's the township uh, just outside of Horsham. Uh, it's called Patchworks Jungle, that's Terry and Kim who I'm excited to announce at our new outlets, a click and collect outlet. So for anybody out in the Horsham region, up in that area, that zone, uh, you'll know that Jung has got our range, you can check it all out on our website vasiliesgarden.com and please support them. They've had a real hard slog, um, the weather's been pretty harsh to them up there, 45% of their rainfall in this last, this not financial, well, may as well be the financial year because it's hurting them. Um, and the garden bits are really struggling, but Terry's a, a wealth of knowledge, so is Kim. They do, they've got an old school. It's, um, it's, it's a crazy setup. They've taken up over an old school and uh, turned it into a, um, I suppose, an edible garden, a flowering garden. They've got everything going on there and the wildlife, the crazy uh, bird life that they have there is amazing. So it's worth a visit out there. Um, and obviously you can get our products as well. Now, I just got back. I did a water this morning um, and I, I want to share with you, well, a couple of things. I have a quick look around to see what the veggie garden's doing. So in the last few days, we finally hit something that looks like spring weather. Although today was very high in winds, was, it was quite high. Uh, temperature got up to about 32, 33 degrees. A couple of the beds did dry out. I didn't water them deep enough, um, meaning that the, st the soil still hasn't activated to its uh, best ability, uh, so it can retain moisture. Uh, for example, while we're here, let's finish off on the moisture part. I'll come around this side here. I went around this afternoon and gave everything a light sprinkle. What I mean by a sprinkle over the top is just to hydrate the mulch more so and just wash down any sort of dust that's gone onto the foliage. And it was early enough so the sun was still shining, not hot because it's already dropped in temperature. Um, to, to, and the wind obviously will sort of dry off the, the water so no real concern about disease developing in that case. Um, Although I did it on these tomato plants too. Now these are the ones that got a little bit of leaf spot and they're starting to come good. There's still a little bit appearing here and there, which I've got to cut off. I just noticed that now there too. But besides that, they're actually taken off really well. Now when I'm talking about moisture and hydrating your garden bed, if it's active, you don't really need to do a big soak over the top. It's just a light sprinkle to hydrate the mulch on the surface so it doesn't dry out from the high winds. But when you go down deep below, I'm not sure if you can see. I'm just going to grab a finger's worth. See, so it's nice and moist. Now, I haven't watered this garden bed deep at all, and I haven't been doing that. I've been doing a, a light sprinkle over the top twice a day, morning and afternoon, because I know what this place is like, and if anybody who's come out to Lethbridge understand what I'm talking about when it comes to weather, it does dry out real quick. But for garden beds that haven't activated, they won't have that. And an exa example of that is over here. Now, these over here were all wilted before. We're talking about the uh, silver bead over there, the lettuce had a wilt. So did this little silver bead here. You can see the effect. See the little bit of discoloration on that leaf has died off? That's because it's gone through stress and, and hell and back again and again there and back again. Anyway, another one that's still in hell is down here. Now this bed, we've gone through it a million times, it still hasn't quite activated, right? So I'm working my way through it. Surface, it's netted. Now the other part is we've got asparagus. No, I'm not going to eat this one too now, it's okay. But we've got asparagus roots fibrous everywhere. So this little, this little plant here is growing in a matted bed of roots from the asparagus and obviously any other surrounding plants. But look, it's pushing on. So I've just got to keep the hydration. It is dry. I watered this one deep and that means it's still not activated. And part of that reason is there's not enough plant life in here. I haven't mass planted enough in here. I've got too many gaps, way too many gaps. And I'm hoping that the plants take off. Some things have like, see that? Now this was planted at the same time. That silver beet there with the first ones you saw earlier were planted at the same time. Obviously it's taken off there. It's settled into the soil and it's happy. So that's a great sign. Now let's go and check out some other plants that are really happy. See folks, no matter which way I position myself, the garden's starting to look better. You know why? I'm actually spending more than half an hour a day. Well, not every day, approximately every day, half an hour and a bit more. Some days I get a lot more than that in, which is great because that's the results start to show. And I'm excited about that. So this, the bed to my right, 
is a bed that I've prepared recently. Two tomato plants, stuck them in there. They've kicked on already. Now this is the bed with the straw on the sides. And this bed here hasn't got that. This is the old traditional method. Still the same application underneath. It's just different walling on it. Look at these tomatoes. Timing is everything. And you know, people have been, <laughs> I've had a few emails saying, I don't know why you can't grow tomatoes for silly. Um, mine are thriving, they're growing big and happy. And I'm, good on you, buddy. Bring them over here and tell me if you can grow them. <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, in Coburg, I drop a seed on the ground, it'll bloody germinate. That's how bloody rich it was over there. And the microclimate here, yeah, the birds will get it, the rats will get it, something will get it before nature allows it to germinate. But the point here is anyway, these tomatoes have settled in now. It was a good time for me to get them in. So any time moving forward, and it's not so much just the timing, but it's also the, the temperature of the soil and above ground as well. So they're very happy. I haven't done any pruning on them. I don't know which way I'm going to go this year with my tomatoes. What I do know is tomatoes will do a lot better with a bit of cover over the top. Let me show you one that's just taken off like wildfire. We planted these. This was done in September, mid-September. I planted this and about two weeks after, or three, I planted those ones over there. So what we're looking at here is obviously some, some of these plants were transplanted from the middle beds that I did in a, what I destroy, the plants that is. So there's some giant silver beet, the fever fuse in here, we've got some garlic chives, we've got some onions in as well. I'm keeping all the seeds. I want to keep all these, I love them. I mean, you can eat these as well. They're bloody delicious. Very, very spicy too, by the way. No, I'm not going to eat it now. But look at this tomato here. Now, I planted this and forgot all about it, literally, folks, and I hardly water in this garden bed. Now, this is in part shade, probably about two weeks older, approximately maybe three weeks older than the other one. So we've got a nice cluster of flowers already developing here like that, beautifully. This one here, not quite ready. Any flowers? But we've got multiple heads going on here. Look at this. Look at what's going on at the top here. It is, oh, one second, let me get it right. It's starting, and I forgot the name of that word again. This has happened to me last time, where it, fascination, that's it. Is it fascination? No, facet, 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 fa, f, ah, <laughs> This is called fasciation, when you get a sort of a widening of the stem, and it looks like three or four stems fused, and it becomes multiple heads on top as well. So I'm just going to let it go through. It's just another fascinating thing in nature. You like how I did that? Hey? Fasciation. It's fascinating. <laughs> New word for me. I've got to write that down before I forget how to spell it. How do you spell it? So tomatoes, folks, as you can see, they actually like part shade. They'll grow and stretch a little bit longer than usual. Um, well, what you're accustomed to when they're grown in full sun. So I recommend a little bit of shade. And I actually think the netting, not think, I know the netting, every year, well, for almost all the years that we've been here, I've grown it under netting, tomatoes that is, and a lot of an assortment of other veggies, and they've all grown big like that. I mean, we've got a few holes here from snails. That's what happens. Do you want me to go hunting for snails again? Point is, if you cover your plants with a little bit of netting, especially with the harsh sun that we have, and especially the high winds, it cuts down a lot of that. Now, this is admittedly getting more afternoon shade than the other ones are, but still the netting helps the plants and protects them a lot more from more things than one. So if you've got a garden and you're struggling with it, your soil's right, but you know, the microclimate's a little bit harsh on it, get some netting over the top. So folks, if you want to get the life in your soil activated, that will return you with lots of humus in the soil, which means that spongy stuff that you get developing, which is just part of that composting process or just after that, which holds the moisture in the ground and that's what you want. And you're not going to get that without the life in the soil. So you've got to get the moisture in and that's the most important part about this. I know we need air to breathe and survive, but without moisture, there's no transfer of minerals. There's no transfer of any microbial activity. None of the, the nutrients that they create, the fungi create, all the bacteria digest. The plants can't draw that up, so the hydration has to go there. So if you don't get the water down deep below, the life's gonna be in the shallow part. And if it gets really hot, that shallow part heats up, dries up, it's dead. So hydration. So work on it slowly, multi-species planting. Don't leave any, any gaps in between. I'm learning that and I'm loving it. So the plants that have got no gaps are thriving better. So they're protecting each other. And that's, I suppose, the best way we can do. 
So we should all live in one big room, like our parents and grandparents used to do when they moved over to Australia. My parents had about three families in one room. I'm okay. <laughs> Check out our website, thesilliesgarden.com, and support your local outlets like Junk that's just come online. If they're not online yet, they'll be on sometime today, folks. Uh, they're in Junk, that's Patchworks Jungle, uh, Terry and Kim, who run that place, and also all our other outlets, uh, Seville, Peronia, Berwick, Boleyn. Why did I start that? Because I can't remember them all. You'll find them on our website, thesilliesgarden.com. From me, Vasily, Maresi.